Hey guys, welcome to this Tuesday episode of SpaceX in the News. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope your work week is nominal thus far. Mine is, thanks for asking. But if it's not, it's soon to be because we're about to talk about everyone's favorite topic. Let's get started, shall we? So on Friday evening, after our previous video dropped, SpaceX released a few photographs of Starship 420's third stack that just happened. So I wanted to show those to you right quick so we could all soak in the beauty together. It's very romantic. In that afternoon, they also performed some more testing. Not exactly sure what it looked like it had to do with stage zero, the ground support equipment. Although it does look like Starship did some of the venting itself. But on Sunday, 420 was destacked again, and probably for the last time. Although last night, a little bit more testing was conducted. Uh, Transport stand has arrived on site to presumably take Starship 20 away. And as I record this video, the 33 Raptor engine thrust simulator is making its way down to the launch site. So we could be seeing Booster 7 stacked on top of it pretty soon. Plenty of road closures coming up that will allow for booster testing. Elon has made it official that the Dynamic Duo 420 will not be the one to attempt orbit. That honor will go to the next Starship Super Heavy in line, I presume 24-7, but uh, we just don't know for sure yet. Elon confirmed that the first Starship orbital flight will be with Raptor 2 engines. Of course, 420 had Raptor 1s. As these new generation engines have much more capability and reliability, 230 tons or about 500,000 pounds of thrust at sea level. We'll have 39 flight worthy engines built by next month, then another month to integrate. So hopefully May for orbital flight test. Of course, that's granted so long as the FAA gives them approval, which we're supposed to hear about by the end of this month, but I'm hearing rumors and speculation that it's looking like it could be delayed yet again. In other SpaceX news, according to Space News, SpaceX has severed ties with their longtime partner, Spaceflight Incorporated. A reason hasn't been given by SpaceX and you can't ask Spaceflight because they don't know why either. They were just informed like through text messaging a minute before their customers were informed by SpaceX that all this was happening. Spaceflight Inc. is the like mediator between uh, rideshare customers and SpaceX. They help them get cheaper flights. And it reads like this might possibly have something to do with the whole Sherpa Tug incident that happened a couple months back before the Transporter 3 mission took flight. But Michael Sheets from CNBC just reported also that SpaceX has raised their small satellite rideshare program price from $1 million for 200 kilograms to sun synchronous orbit to now 1.1 million. Quote, to account for excessive levels of inflation. Yesterday, OneWeb, who's in competition with Starlink, announced yesterday that they came to an agreement with SpaceX to launch at least some of their remaining 222 or so Constellation satellites aboard a Falcon 9 rocket, or for Falcon 9 rockets, I guess. Now, the reason for this, as some of you already know, OneWeb was launching their satellites on the Russian Soyuz rockets, but then the Russia-Ukraine war started and uh, everyone started canceling Russia with their you know, sanctions. And so Russia can't launch their rockets, so they can't launch the OneWeb satellites anymore. So I guess OneWeb is stuck with launching on Falcon 9, which should be cheaper anyway. So of course, this change of plans increases SpaceX's yearly speculated mass to orbit. Elon twatting that SpaceX's default plan was about 65% of global launch mass to orbit this year. And we're talking globally here. Incremental demand might take that to about 70%. So this one web thing might not create a major change. And those numbers don't even include Starship, which of course would increase those percentages exponentially. And you know, Roscosmos twatted their two cents about the whole one web situation. Yeah, uh, Russia is still allowed on twatter, even though they've bombed innocent civilians. Meanwhile, Trump is still not allowed on the platform. I'll just pause it here to let you read it if you want. Elon laughing at the idea that it's almost like Google was messing with the translation, but just think for a second and in all seriousness, how messed up that would be. I mean, to interfere in global affairs like that, that you could mislead a lot of people by doing that. Oh, and then you think, you know, big tech and Twitter did do that. They did that during the 2020 presidential election, not by altering speech, but by banning it outright. But continuing on the topic of satellites, the Satellite 2020 conference kicked off this week and one of SpaceX's Starlink guys, Jonathan Hoffeller, was on the premises to give us a little bit of an update on what's going on on their end. He says the company is close to building eight Starlink satellites a day at their Washington facility and that getting the cost of their user terminal down is key to being prolific, currently got the price down to two thirds of the original version. If you remember back to when Starlink became available to their beta customers, SpaceX was losing like thousands of dollars per terminal that they sent out because they were just that expensive. Yet another batch of Starlink user terminals have been delivered to Ukraine, which apparently is the place where all truth resides and the truth always wins. Well, here, here, I'll drink to that because the truth does prevail and the truth always does come out. But calling Ukraine the truth is like calling Dr. Fauci the science. 
nationalizing the media and canceling all the other press that you don't like because they don't ask the right questions, as well as shutting down opposing political parties and arresting their leaders. And not to mention, castrating your Russian prisoners of war is not exactly how democracies are supposed to behave. I mean, I stand with the Ukrainian people fighting for their very lives and freedom, but come on, most of us have known for years that your government is corrupt as f I said, you're not getting the billion, I'm gonna be leaving here, and I think it was, what, six hours? I looked, I said, I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> Got fired. On Friday night, SpaceX launched another flock of Starlink satellites to orbit on a record-setting booster flying for its 12th time, making yet another successful landing on the drone ship just to read the instructions. According to Elon, this was the heaviest Falcon 9 payload at 16.25 metric tons. So a two for one deal, two records for one flight. Well, that's all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. Shout out to those of you supporting the channel on Locals. Have a nominal work week and until Friday, Godspeed.